Yay! All right. So this is Savage Breaststroke, and I'm here with Neruda Williams, a New York comedian and founder and proprietor of, of the Harlem Comedy Festival. Is that the right way to say it? Sure. I, I, I don't know if I'm a proprietor or not, but uh, yeah, it, it's a company. Yeah. Wow. We've never... Okay. So I want to get like full disclosure because you and I have known each other quite a few years now. Yeah. Yeah. We met working at Pioneers for Ali for Uh And uh, we met working over there and... Uh, I want to say, like, from the day I met you, I was like, I love this guy. I love this guy so much. Uh, and we don't see each other as much as I as much as I want. But uh, um, so we've known each other a long time. But I don't know anything about this festival. I didn't know. I just went and performed with Elky that one time, and I had no idea you were running your own festival. So how did that uh, come? Uh, well, I'm from Harlem, as you know, and. Um... I just I wanted to do something that brought comedians of color uptown, and I just mm. there wasn't a Harlem comedy festival. There was like a Brooklyn one. There was all these other ones, but there wasn't one celebrating my town or my part of town. And wow. so I I wanted to bridge those two things. Um, and yeah, that was that was really it. Man. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that's so, when I, when I realized that, I guess that was like maybe three years ago that we went up there to do that. I was like, I can't believe Naruto's doing this. Um, this is so, this is so cool. So, um, yeah, so I wanted to provide some, some context for how we know each other and what you do. You've been doing stand up what, probably like. Like 10 years. I started in 08. Wow. Well, I guess okay. Oh, like 12 years. years. 12 yeah. Years. Yeah. Um, okay. Beautiful. So, uh, and I don't think I've ever seen you do stand up. Maybe one time, maybe at the festival, but I don't think I've ever even seen you do stand up. I think I've just we just known each other from the scene, and we we tried to comedy once before, but that didn't that didn't that fell through because probably because I pulled out of it like a jerk years ago. <laughs> we were supposed to not a jerk. Uh, we were supposed to write sketches. Yeah, we were making some, and they were. I was. Yeah, I thought we were doing we something with. Uh, what's his name? I forget his name now. But uh, uh, I forget really, his name too. Really uh, cool guy. Yeah, uh, like, and we were like writing. We, we we formed like a little sketch team, and we wanted to do like improv in between. Yeah. I think. you had just come from doing that like Shakespeare tour thing. Yeah, um, yeah, that was that year. Yeah, a lot that year. That was right, right before I started hosting karaoke full time. Right, right. And then you started hosting karaoke full time. So that kind of interrupted mm. the writing sessions and all of that. Um, yes. But yeah. Um, so, I, you, yeah, so you're, you're a stand up. I feel like you're a guy that I, oh, I, I've seen you, like I'm always running into you. Mm -hmm. You're a person embedded inside the scene in, in a lot of ways. Uh, I mean, I'm. You know, my brother is like 15 years older than me. So like, I look for community and I think, um, mm. I think I, I just kind of, once you fall in love with doing comedy, especially because there's such a community around it, I think um, it's really easy to just always kind of be around. I think in, in the last few years though, I haven't been around as much so. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or maybe that's mm. just my own like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anxiety that I I don't hang out enough, but I, yeah, right. maybe back then, yeah, I definitely was always around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me th let me think. I I feel like whenever I bring you up, like, do you know Naruto? People I was like, yeah, I know Naruto. I feel like you're one oh, of those people, uh, nice. and I talk about you a lot because I love you. I'm always like, oh, do you know oh. this guy? Um, Appreciate it. Uh, uh, okay, so we're we're gonna talk about today two of your big influences um oh. which is what the show is mostly about uh, mm -hmm. uh savage breaststroke and um so we can we can jump into this one like a famous artist uh is and and how and how that what that influence is um that was a tough question because it's like i get influenced by so many different types of artists um mm -hmm. and so it's like i could name 
an artist pretty much in every form that mm. has influenced me heavily. You know? Yes. Um, and then, like, as far as peers are concerned, I'm influenced by all my, my peers, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so this is tough. Um, yes. And then also, you said a famous person or a peer. And I'm like, well, a lot of my peers are famous, sir. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I thought, yes, yes. And that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I totally understand that, which is, I, I'm, I'm so interested in that because comedy is so strangely, again, you know, where say like, that, say, um, say that again. it's so strangely egalitarian because, mm -hmm. because you know what I mean? Like you've probably been on shows with people who are world famous, you know what I mean? Sure, yes. and, and, and like did a set just like they did a set. Sure. Remember um, um, uh, Mike Berbiglia, he was like going around doing um, uh, improv sets around the country and, and, and just hanging out and doing stuff at the UCB, you know, when he was already Mike Berbiglia and we would just do an improv set, you know, to do, mm -hmm. doing a show. And he was like, he was like, yeah, my wife said to me, it's so crazy that like you're Mike Berbiglia and some of these people are writers or, or on different shows. And then some of the people we improvise with are going home to three roommates. Yeah, and it's, yeah. I feel like there's maybe in jazz, but I don't think there's that disparity of of success and fame in jazz these days. Like I don't think there's mm -hmm. many art forms like comedy where like you know what I mean you can be you like shoulders. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it's like you're truly you're not peers at all, but in certain moments you are peers. Like you're a comic, yeah. just like another comic. I find that so fast. And what I also find fascinating about comedy, and correct me if like I'm wrong, but because of that, you can see, I think I also make music and and I'm an actor and there's always this like, oh, you got to know the right person and it's blah, blah, and this and that. But like, I think for me in comedy, like like you're saying, like I know people who have blown the f and the only thing I saw them do was be at every mic with new jokes. Sure, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, like they were poor just like the rest of us for the most part. So I don't know what trick they could have had. Like to me in comedy, it's like, yeah, people fuck each other over or dicks or, or whatever. But like at the end of the day, if you're not funny, it's pretty easy to see it. You know what I mean? Or if you're not showing up and working, well, talk, to, I, talk about it. I mean, I think that's a very, I don't know. You say some stuff sometimes and I'm like, okay, well, that's a lot. So yes. I have to break it down. <laughs> yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say that, you know, comedy is obviously different for everybody, right? Like, you, yes. you can't really say who is funny and who isn't because oh, it just sure. might not be funny to you, right? Um, so there's that one other, that, that's a component. Another thing about what you said is just like, not everybody who's famous is rich, you know what I mean? Like, fame doesn't necessarily mm. equal wealth or even prosperity, to be totally honest, in this day and age. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, that is, I totally agree with those points. I just always found it interesting that I came up, when I was coming up, like going to art school, whatever, there's always this secrecy about who's in and who made it, blah, blah. And uh, I can say, I don't know if that corollary is for everybody, but for me, the people I know who blew up that, like the few years I did stand up, that that I was neck and neck with them, that I was running, like, like a Mike Lawrence, for example, mm -hmm. or, a, or a Mark Norman. I do know they were at every mic I was at and they always yeah. had new jokes. You know what right. I mean? Like, and, and then those are the guys who, among the people yeah. who shot up, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I do know that correlation is there, that at the mm -hmm. time I was watching them and going, Fuck, they they work fucking hard. They're probably and they were probably dicks to me at the, at some point, maybe if I ever spoke to them. They might have been dicks. They might have not been. I don't remember. But uh, I'm not. I think oh, Norman. I'm not, I'm not saying they're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Good people are bad people. I, I'm saying that has nothing to do with it. All I'm saying is whether they were good people, they were fucking working their asses off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that is the only thing I'm saying. Um, Mike was kind of a dick sometimes. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, I love Mike but, uh, too, man. Yeah, I do love him too. I mean, he's a fucking joke machine. Uh, and so who he is. Anyway, I, I don't know any of these people really personally. Um, 
do you if i had to press you and say right first the famous the famous artist what would you yeah. say just off the top not even the top one just something that's at the forefront of your mind you know and i gotta say it's from comedy probably it's eddie murphy sure you know. Is it just Eddie Murphy in general? Is there a particular bit or special or? I mean, my favorite bit is, you know, the um is the bunny and the bear. Uh the yeah. Uh, I don't a bear know. and a bunny are taking a shit in the woods, and uh the bear turns to the bunny and says, Hey bunny, do you ever have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? And the bunny says, I know how to wipe my ass. So the bear wipes his ass with the bunny. Oh wow. Talk to me about what it is about that particular joke. That's a very specific joke. Um, it's probably, probably one of the most. No, yeah, but it's probably that's like a that's like a street joke from Eddie Murphy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Joke. Like I'm sure that's yeah. his joke, but that's like you know what I mean. That's no, like it was a street joke. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how. But I'm, okay, what is it about that joke? Is it because it is it is part of it because it came from Eddie? Uh, uh, Talk about that, and then what is it specifically about that joke? I think it's from his Delirious special, mm -hmm. and like most of us, like I used to sneak and like watch the VHS tapes, you know, when I wasn't supposed to. Uh, and I remember in that part of the special, he 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 knows that there's a kid in the audience, or he finds out there's a kid in the audience, uh, and he was like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" And he was uh, like, "Here's yeah. a joke for you." that you can take. And I think that touched me as a kid somehow. Um, and it just always stuck with me. And a lot of my jokes even today are very animal based. Um, wow. And uh, have animal premises of some sort. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, I would say that was a huge influence on me. And then of course that whole special and the whole being like a handsome, cool dude who was also we've hilarious. We've talked about that before. That that paradigm for you, is that the right word? But but that sort of, because because I know the last, the first few com comedy conversations we had were about Michael Che. And the, very much this like, this archetype of the young black cool comic who was like a yeah, little bit sharper than everybody else in the room. He's definitely that, yeah. Oh man, okay, so I'm gonna go back to that. What is it about? I'm curious about what it is about the animals. This is my this is a little bit of a theory that I have. Are you also partial to like um, animation and cartoons? Um, not in today's sense. I mean, I watched a lot of like Warner Brothers stuff as a kid. Okay. Um, I was just watching the Goofy movie the other day. Uh, okay. But uh, not like anime or anything like that i mean i watched like akira but that was purely for the art of it and i sure, definitely sure. was more like on the end of that bandwagon yeah and i wasn't really on the bandwagon i was just like oh this is incredible and this is groundbreaking you know when mm -hmm. i saw it back in the day and um but that's kind of where it ended for me uh whereas i know there's people who like know about all types of shit uh that I, I don't know about. And people yeah. confuse my name for Naruto or something like that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That's some that kind I've of anime. Yeah, I don't know it either. Uh, are you partial to like illustrations or, or drawings or, or, or things like that? Well, yeah, I mean, so my brother is a, is a graphic designer and a, and a graphic artist and a graffiti artist. So, mm. you know, as a kid, I would like steal his black books and, and try to like replicate what he was doing. But he's like, I mean, he's like a like a savant with it. Like, so uh, it's not like I could ever do what he does. But yeah, of course. Like, if if art is around you, I think you're going to absorb some inspiration from it somehow. So yeah, I love illustration. I love I love hand technique, and I love the beauty of watching someone, even if it's like a, a calligrapher or something like that. Like, just how strong and how smooth their lines are, and like, and then I look at, like, how I write chicken scratch. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love illustration. I love all of that. I love drawings and painting. Um, the reason I ask is my theory is that if you connect, because to me, it's like sim sort of similar to fables, where or, or 
clowns where like animals can sort of we can um what's the word anthropomorphize them and and mm. they can sort of represent like simple versions of ourselves and um that's good for that's good fodder for like an animated cartoon or for a joke because it's sort of they become these avatars for us that we can tell jokes through you know what i mean yeah um yeah and then we also I mean, we have our preconceived notions about each other, right? And so that's why race and gender jokes and, you know, stuff like that work so well. But mm. we also have preconceived notions about animals. And you assume mm. certain things uh, about, you know, a turtle or or, uh, or a shark, you know? One you're scared of, one you think is slow, you know, whatever. Mm. Whatever you have in your uh, head. Of course. And you can play with those ideas and images um, and 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 use them as devices to control an audience. Whoa! I now now that you're saying it, like I would watch a whole special of that of somebody who just <laughs> made jokes about animals. You know what I mean? Because like essentially, what that is is just BoJack Horseman. Like that's kind oh, yeah. of why that works. And 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 like they're they're playing into those kind of uh, stereotypes you call them, and then also playing against them. And it, they're so powerful. Um, oh yeah. God, I never that's, about that. yeah, that's so that's so interesting. Yeah, and um, what does that say to you? What does that joke say to you about Eddie Murphy that he chose to include that? Um, I don't know. Looking back on it now, I I have a whole lot of stuff that's my own personal attachment and projection, right? Like, so for me now, I see somebody who number one had total control of a theater of people where he could break from his set and and just think of, you know, give that street joke, hit that street joke and do that just for one person in the audience then get back to his set of an hour. I mean, I've seen people forget jokes in a five minute set. So mm, that's mm. fucking tough. Um, yeah. And then also it shows me someone who cares. Cause I mean, I, I <laughs> I am a person that I really hate getting heckled. I really hate getting interrupted. I really hate going off course. Um, I, I care about the material I write. I care about what I have to say in my material. So mm -hmm. I take my words so fucking seriously that I don't know if I would have the empathy to go off script to give somebody a gift like that and then go back into my shit. Like, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, I see empathy. I see someone who really cared about the people he was performing for. Um, and that is, that is something that you can't fake, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and it, yeah. That's so interesting. I feel like that's something that we rarely talk about with Eddie, which is like that, there's a lot of performers for whom, there's a lot of performers that we love because they don't give a fuck, like a Dice or a, or a, or a Stan Hope, or a, even though I feel like Stan Hope kind of does care for his group of misfits that like him but but just that. we we just like that we just like they're like whatever you know like they, they seem to be those. unbothered yeah. and 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 eddie had that he had this cool he had this like i'm i'm, I'm wearing a fucking leather suit but i but think that was confidence though yes i think there's something about him that we can inherently look at him and we feel like he cares about us you know what yeah. i mean like kid cuddy has that i think like you look yeah. at him and you're like, I think he cares about what happens to me. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Oh, yeah, that yeah, that's something I I love about 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 it. Yeah, I I feel like we could go. I feel like there's a whole separate pod is just talking about the phenom that was Eddie Murphy. Who who? How old was he when he did that special? Maybe 24, 21? Oh yeah, I think he was around 21, 22 maybe. God. I didn't even know. Okay, so um, I think, yeah, I, I uh, that that I mean, whole piece is. Oh, did you have something else? No, no, no. Go ahead. That whole piece is fascinating to me because I think one of the reasons I one of one of the many reasons that I couldn't stick stick it out with stand up. I just don't think I. I also don't think I have the blood lust that I think stand ups need. I think stand ups need laughter in a way that I don't I don't need it as much as they need. And um and uh that's one of the reasons. But the other reason is I don't as much as I appreciate jokes 
aesthetically, I don't really care for them. I don't care mm -hmm. and then repeat them and, and, and carry them until they're perfected, you know? Mm -hmm. I really yeah. am fascinated. But I, I'm fascinated by people who do. Like, my favorite comic right now is Norm MacDonald. And I think mm -hmm. Norm MacDonald, among other things, cherishes cherishes the joke joke. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. He's a great joke writer. Uh, yeah, and I think he, like, he does these, uh, one of my favorite jokes, it's probably not his joke, it's probably a street joke, but he did it on Conan, and he goes, uh, he's doing some kind of bit, and he goes, uh, I always felt I was incomplete before I met my wife, and now I'm finished. <laughs> you know, I love, I love that. Um, but okay, so let's. I want to get to the 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 piece from a peer that you, that you have thought right. of, right? Um, yeah, like I was saying, like it's hard to just think of a peer and be like, oh, I'm inspired by mm -hmm. this particular peer, mm -hmm. uh, or just a piece, a joke, or or anything. It doesn't have to be a even a, a comedian. It could be it could be anybody. Right. No, no, I, I totally understand. Um, Yeah, it's just so tough to think of something specific. Um, I would say, I mean, I really, I really, you know what I love? I like watching a lot of like YouTube sketch stuff. I like watching, uh, and I, there's nothing in particular that I can think of, um, but Richie Redding just did a great thing on COVID where he's like ran out of Purell uh, and he did this whole thing where he's like going to various places and then he has to like suck a dick for Purell from like uh -huh. a Purell drug dealer. Nice. Um, that was, that's great. I don't know, there's just so much. There's just so much stuff. And um, I think what really inspires me about my peers is their, their hunger and their, um, their creativity. And I think I love artists because artists don't allow circumstance to hold them back right mm. artists uh have the ability to imagine what is possible even if it doesn't exist yet and so when you ask me about a particular thing i don't know but uh but that in general is what inspires me about my peers you reminded me of uh i i just want to just like having a piece of this conversation with you. Are you a person who, do you believe, do you, do you believe in the idealism that like uh, art, a piece of art or art and the idea of art, do you believe that it can save the world? Uh, well, from what? That's a good. That's a good response. Um, I would say I think there's a lot of ways to look at that question that are worth talking about. I would say, generally for me, do you feel that art can make the world that we're living a practically, in a pra in a pragmatic way, pra pragmatically a better place? I think art is a good thing. Um... I think that experiencing art, expressing art, creating art is, is essential to, to human development mm. um, and probably human sanity, to be totally honest, right? Because uh, in some ways, I guess language and math is also art to mm. somebody, not mm -hmm. to me, but yeah, somebody, um, or maybe language to me, but not math. But right uh, to some, I can vouch for but, that. It's for some people. My girlfriend is a physicist, and she says to her, yeah. she's a stand-up as well, and she says that for her, the the two are the same. Right, and I can see yeah. that. You yeah, know, I can totally see that. So, um, but I would say, I don't think that art is a solution to most of. The problems that face us at this point mm -hmm. in time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So if, when you're saying like, "Will art save the world?" I'm like, "Well, art probably won't discover a vaccine for whatever this is, 
art isn't going to um, replace currency or financial markets. Uh, art isn't going to feed you. Uh, like you can't eat art, you know. Um, yeah, and art isn't going to, you know, power your home or shelter you. So, yeah. um, Unless, of course, you're an architect, maybe, uh, and also a bricklayer. I mean, you need, you need a lot of skills to have your art shelter you. Uh, yes, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the solutions to human problems aren't necessarily solved by art, but they are eased and distracted by art, and I think that's mm. an essential thing, too, because obviously we all know that we don't come to solutions by thinking about the problem. You come to solutions by knowing what the problem is, distracting yourself, your brain continuing to think, and it solves it, and then you come up with an idea to solve it. That's how all ideas work. Ooh, okay. Ah, hmm. That's that's such an interesting way of looking at it because that's like, um, that's, uh, uh, as a metaphor, I'm trying to form my mind and it's not working. It's like, um, it's like, it's like the art doesn't, the art doesn't like if you need to travel from one place to the other, you've got to build a plane. And art right. can't build a plane, but art is what is in the air current that the plane travels on. Is that the metaphor? No, I don't think that's it. Shit, I can't figure it out. Uh, it's you something do have to build a plane, right? But in order for the Wright brothers to come up with the idea for the plane, they had to see the beauty of a bird fly. They had to see that uh, they had to distract themselves from solving the problem of flight, and then they mm -hmm. they did that, and they got back to they ideas happened, and they came up with however they came up with the plane. I don't know how this, they came up with the plane. Yes, yeah, I don't, I don't either. But there, there's there's something similar that I heard um, Alan Alda say once, right? Mm -hmm. And Alan Alda does all this stuff about trying to connect using improv and comedy to help bridge communication gaps between scientists between uh, just to another and scientists to the general public i mean that's how i learned about this idea was through improv right was through doing you know openings and stuff like that where you you go one to three right you don't go mm. one two three you go one to four one to three right and i remember talking to one of my teachers and they were talking about like how if you're thinking about what the scene is, you're already lost. Like, you know what I mean? Like, be in the scene, be present, but don't be like, well, what am I gonna say next? Cause then you're probably not gonna say anything, number one. And number two, you're gonna say something that doesn't make any sense as the character. You're gonna say something outside of that, which ruins improv, right? So mm -hmm. um, the whole point was, you know what I mean? Go one to three. And I and I think that's what art in 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 a theory does for human brains, right? Like it allows us to take our minds off of the daily problems we have to solve, but our brains never stop working. They they still start they're still solving those problems, but our you know our our main focus isn't on it, and it's the subconscious that that then creates the idea that you get in the the present or the main conscious, and then you use that to create or solve your problem. Yes. Um, yeah, that's the that thing that, from yeah. that, yes, and yeah, totally in improv. And um, I think that's where I learned it as well. The thing that Alan Alda said is he said, artists, they feel like when they're not doing anything, when they're like not working, they're like, they get down on themselves for not, I'm not working hard enough or whatever. But he says, you, we don't realize that our brains do the most processing in those times when we're vegging out and not doing shit. You know, it, we don't realize that our, our subconscious is going scram processing yeah. tons of stuff in that time, in that downtime. Right. Um, that and, and what's also interesting to me is you, you're bringing up. Um, I think a lot about this about how one uh, construct in life is training us for other bunch, a lot of other parts of life, in a very one to one. Uh, obvious uh, thing, like you would say, like 
I would consider myself religious. And so you could say that like in religion, marriage, like a, a husband and wife marriage, the metaphor for our relationship to God. Mm. Like, like a marriage, like the relationship you have with your wife or your husband mirrors in some way the relationship you would have with God, like that sort of devotion or mirrors the relationship that all humanity has with God. You know what I mean? Or um, to put it another way, like um, a kid, when a kid is on a football team, like that that experience on that football team, the commitment, they work, they put in is a direct metaphor for the, the what they'll do in their career. You know what I mean? Like how you apply yourself in that, out of it, what you put in is a direct, is a direct, if oh, you right. put into your career, what you'll get out of it. Right. The effort you put in is what you'll get out on the other side. Sure. Right. So sure. I think similarly, the experience of making art and, and how art is made and how creativity has happened, the model for that is a model for, can be a model for all problem solving. And like by a similar token, the model of a scientist can be a model of problem solving for an artist. And then yeah. all these. So I think there's a lot of like, um, uh, when we look at, when, when we watch a movie or when we watch a celebrity go through something or we watch a friend go through something, they're going through that issue and maybe solving a problem can be a model for us of how to deal with a similar problem or solve a similar problem. You know? I mean, I, I don't know if I can agree to that. I don't know if I can argue it either. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, it's, there was, I recently went back and watched a little bit of an interview with Steve Martin. He was talking about um, a part in his book, Born Standing Up, and he was saying how he was studying philosophy and studying syllogisms, which are like little little kind of logic equations. Like if this is this, then this must be this. And he said, Lewis Carroll wrote some weird ones that he really liked, and those are the basis for his early joke writing. Interesting, interesting. I've read Born Standing Up. Yeah. I don't remember that, but I could see that. I mean, yeah, he definitely has some interesting ways of looking at joke writing and character development, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what I never realized was that his whole set was making fun of entertainment in, in itself and being an entertainer in itself. And uh, that's brilliant to me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I, yeah, I don't even know the tenor of it, if he was, like, kind of looking down on it or if he was going, like, just that it's just funny that we do it this way. Yeah, he was saying, I, I think, I, don't, I can't be sure, but I feel like he was saying it's absurd that people are even looking at me right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, why yeah. would you come here? To do this you know you could you can just be funny you could just laugh you know the idea of paying someone to make you do something that you do anyway is is weird that is weird do you and that's like, this is a question i'll close on do you struggle with that paradox and when you're doing comedy that do you do you ever look at an audience and go like you guys could do this for each other no and like mm. Mm. Because, I mean, unlike Steve Martin's character or act that he played on stage, I'm being me up there, and I don't think anybody could replace me. Mm. Mm. Yes, I I feel that I, that resonates with me in so many ways. Okay, well, Neruda, this is this is beautiful. This is exactly what I needed. It's such a great episode. Um, right, so, cool. so I, I'm gonna let Thanks you go. For Thank you. And um, oh, do me a favor. Uh, when you when we're done with this, could you post in the comments of the, you'll see this post online and I'll tag you in it. Could you post in the comments um, uh, uh, maybe like a, a link to any of the things you talked about? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. just write it right about delirious. And we talked about this guy's thing. Well, send me a little message of exactly what you want and I'll I'll do it. I'll do that. So in the so people know in the comments below there'll be links to the different things that Nerd and I talked about, and also a link to if it's not postponed or canceled this year, the Harlem Comedy Festival.
Well, for right, for now, I think it is. It is yes. going to be canceled. But right. there's it's past it. things that people can look into it for for next year. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. they should know about it because it's awesome that you that you made that. Um, all right, buddy. I, I'm so thankful for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Have a good all day. Right.